Hey everyone, welcome back to Instrumentation Lectures. So far we had learned about different types of errors like gross errors, systematic errors and random errors. Of this, the systematic errors are mostly caused due to instrument faults and therefore we can identify the errors caused by them and eliminate them. However, for the other two errors, that is gross errors and random errors, we can't relate the error to any cause. Random errors are caused by large number of small effects, each one being a variable. These variables may have additive effect in some cases and subtractive effect in some cases on the quantity being measured. For instance, say the true value of some quantity is 10 and the measured values are 9.9, .9, 10.1, 10.2, 9.7 so these are measured values and these are true values here you can see that the positive errors and the negative errors cancel out while we take the average and we get a central value which approximates the true value so in a nutshell we can say since random errors are unknown the only way to reduce their effect is by taking large number of measurements and using statistical analysis to approximate the true value of quantity under study and thereby analytically determine the uncertainty of the final result. Also to make the statistical methods and interpretations meaningful, the measurements should be done using as many different procedures, techniques and experimenters as practicable. So let's start our lecture now. The first statistical method we employ is arithmetic mean. The most probable value of a measured variable is the arithmetic mean of the number of readings taken and the best approximation will be made when the number of readings of the same quantity is very large. The arithmetic mean is given by the expression x bar equal to x1 plus x2 plus etc to xn by n where x bar is the arithmetic mean, x1, x2 etc to xn are the readings and n is the number of readings. Let's take an example to make the concept more clear. A set of independent current measurements were taken by 6 observers and were recorded as 12.8 milliampere, 12.2 milliampere, 12.5 milliampere, 13.1 milliampere, 12.9 milliampere, and finally 12.4 milliampere. Calculate the arithmetic mean. Okay, so the arithmetic mean x bar is obtained by 12.8 plus 12.2 plus 12.5 plus 13.1 plus 12.9 plus 12.4 the whole by number of readings are 6 which is equal to 12.65 milliampere so this is the arithmetic mean next we have deviations deviation is defined as the departure of a given reading from the arithmetic mean of a group of readings the deviation of the nth reading from mean can be expressed as dn equal to xn minus x bar where dn is the deviation of the nth reading, xn is the nth reading and x bar is the arithmetic mean of the readings. Note that deviation from mean may have a positive or negative value depending on whether xn is greater than or smaller than x bar. Also, the algebraic sum of all deviations must be zero. Let's see how. Let's calculate the sum of deviations sigma i equal to 1 to n di which is equal to d1 plus d2 plus etc to dn which is equal to we know d1 is equal to x1 minus x bar therefore x1 minus x bar plus similarly we have d2 equal to 
x2 minus x bar plus etc plus xn minus x bar and we can write this as x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn minus x bar plus x bar plus etc plus x bar and this is n times so we can write x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn minus n x bar now we have seen that mean x bar equal to x1 plus x2 plus etc to xn by n or n x bar equal to x1 plus x2 plus etc plus xn therefore this can be replaced as n x bar which gives us sigma i equal to 1 to n di equal to n x bar minus n x bar which is equal to 0. So we have seen that the algebraic sum of all deviations must be equal to 0. Let us now see the same example as before and try to find the deviations from mean. So deviation of the first reading from mean that is d1 is equal to x1 minus x bar which is 12.8 milliampere minus 12.65 milliampere 12.8 minus 12.65 which is equal to 0.15 milliampere similarly d2 is equal to 12.2 minus 12.65 which is equal to minus 0.45 milliampere similarly we get d3 is equal to 12.5 minus 12.65 which is minus 0.15 milliampere similarly d4 is equal to 0.45 milliampere d5 is equal to 0.25 milliampere and d6 is equal to minus 0.25 milliampere also if you add up these values that is d1 plus d2 plus d3 plus d4 plus d5 plus d6 we get the sum of all deviations is equal to 0 next we have average deviation average deviation is defined as the sum of absolute values of deviations divided by the number of readings the average deviation is an indication of the precision of instruments used in making the measurements highly precise instruments will yield a low average deviation between the readings now let's try to calculate the average deviation for the data in the previous example here the average deviation d is given by absolute value of d1 which is 0.15 milliampere plus absolute value of d2 which is 0.45 milliampere plus absolute value of d3 which is 0.15 milliampere plus 0.45 milliampere plus 0.25 milliampere plus 0.25 milliampere divided by the number of readings which is 6 and the value of average deviation is 0.283 milliampere finally we have standard deviation by definition the standard deviation sigma is the square root of all the individual deviation squared divided by the number of readings now this expression is valid when n is greater than or equal to 20 when n is less than 20 we use another expression for standard deviation which is this here the denominator is changed to n minus 1 now another expression for essentially the same quantity is variance or mean square deviation 
it is defined as the square of standard deviation now let us compute the standard deviation and variance for the same example as discussed before the standard deviation sigma here is given by square root of 0.15 square that is d1 square plus minus 0.45 square plus minus 0.15 square plus 0.45 square plus 0.25 square plus minus 0.25 square divided by number of readings which is 6 and the value is 0.339 so this is standard deviation and the variance v is given by sigma square which is 0.339 square or 0.1149 this is variance okay so that's all for this lecture to summarize we learned about arithmetic mean deviation average deviation standard deviation and variance if you found the lecture useful please like the video and also support us by subscribing to the channel also if you have any doubts feel free to ask them in the comments so that either me or some other viewer can help you in the next video we will start our discussion on measurement of resistances thanks for watching and have a nice day